This is gonna drive me crazy! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi Harley Quinn. It's just a DC kind of month, I guess, with the McFarlane stuff and then coming back around to this. I've had this for a couple weeks, but there's a lot of toys. I'm really excited. I love the Amazing Yamaguchi line, mostly. There's some I hate, there's some I love, there's some I just kind of like, but I was excited about Harley because I don't have a figure with this look and that's awesome. Looking at the box, it's your standard Amazing Yamaguchi box. It's pretty much take the color scheme of the character, take a bunch of comic pictures and then just throw it at the box and see what sticks. Logos, promotional shot, window shows the figure, some accessories, but there are some things hidden back here behind the graphic. Then you see the stand in its usual one little piece of tape position. On the side, another promotional shot of Harley, but looking around the box before I even started filming, I noticed that they've toned some things back and they're kind of using the whole box to show off accessories. There's hammer, there's roller skate, then on the other side, effect. But sliding back around to the back, <laughs> there's your background, there's your Harley colors, there's a bunch of promotional shots, it shows what it comes with. Normal intrigue surprise. Calling out the baseball bat right there, but no quotes which is kind of weird we've always seen those and they're usually wacky quotes but harley doesn't get any the most mouthy character we've probably gotten besides deadpool in this line and no quotes kind of makes me sad but this is the trash around my figure so that's okay on the top harley quinn amazing yamaguchi dc all logos on the bottom another picture of harley with joker more warnings contain small parts don't put them in your mouth you're winning lottery numbers but let's get this open see what's going on here. Like normal, inside flaps have the Harley Quinn logo. There's another picture of Harley. Another thing to point out in case you're opening this and you feel like somebody's tampered with it, these don't usually come with tape on them. So if you're missing it, <laughs> it's like that from the factory. Oh, I like the card suits right here too. Is that it? Yep. Well, they're clean on this side, kind of splattered on this side. Another picture of Harley on the flap, mad love. And then this back, yeah, should be a big picture of Harley. It has a modern take and her classic tights look. Cool little thing to pin on the wall if that's where you want to do with it or recycle it. Here is the stand. It's the same stand we get with every Rebel Tech release. I do love the extra joints they provide here. More companies should do that just in case. And then the instructions, the eye gimmick. I'm not looking forward to that. Swapping out the faces. Looks like the weapons come apart to go in her hand. You switch out the roller skates and then the onomatopoeia goes on the weapons. You didn't think I knew such big words, did you? It helps that it was an actual DC character. <laughs> <laughs> With some of the joints, they put plastic in between. If you try to pull, it usually gets <laughs> really bunched up and then you're tearing at it. You're trying to dig it out. The legs do just pop off. You can take those plastic protective pieces out and then just, oops, just pop the legs back on. Although there's a sneak peek at articulation. First up, right out of the package, let's take a moment to appreciate an amazing Yamaguchi figure in a neutral stance. I know that's a weird thing to call out, but if you know this line or you've seen my previous reviews on figures from this line, they aren't really meant to be standing straight up and down. They're meant for action poses, extreme action poses. So seeing Harley like this, and actually looking pretty nice, I consider that a plus. But looking at the overall figure, I don't really recognize this costume. I know it's a more modern take, but I can understand why Kyoto went with this costume. It hides joints for the most part. Plus it's visually striking. And on top of all that, like I said at the first, we don't have a lot of action figures in this costume that looks like this. I can see why they went this direction. And they did a really good job of translating that into plastic. The shininess makes you think leather for the top and then the shorts, but you get down to the leggings and they're a matte color, so they're more of a fabric. Well, I mean, it's plastic, but you know what I mean. It's supposed to represent fabric. The boots, not as shiny or glossy as the shorts and top, but still has a sheen to it to kind of give it that leather look. Shininess to the knee pads, again, to fake the material they're supposed to be or while well, they're trying to be which would be a hard plastic or even a metal and that's the same for the elbow pads and then the shoulder pads and then each one has their own little design the star diamonds diamonds diamond star diamonds and that's all set off by the pale white skin tone and that's a nice contrast against the rest of the costume it really makes it eye popping and it even continues it down here to the sock so it breaks up the black and white a little bit maybe a little bit more skin than some people prefer but again 
it's this costume. It's not her classic look. Her belt has a little pouch back here on the back just in case she does want to carry something along. And to tie it together, the paints are all pretty sharp. You can see some bleed here and there, but at a normal distance on the shelf, human eyes. It's pretty sharp looking all the way around. And then we get to the head. It doesn't have a mask. It has the hair. It's dyed in two colors. It's split. It's in ponytails and it's cute, you know? It looks like what it's supposed to. The hair sculpt isn't super, super detailed, but that ties in with the look for the rest of the body, where it's kind of comic booky, kind of animated, but it's all Harley. Nice little hint of purple makeup right there, then the red lips, the blue eyes. We'll talk about the eyes here in a minute. I have some gripes? Or maybe I'm a grouchy old man, either way. But as an overall figure, it, it looks fantastic. If you know Reveltech, you know they're always pushing the boundaries of how much articulation they can fit into a figure, and this one's no different. With previous Amazing Yamaguchi figures, we've seen kind of an evolution where it's a little bit more solid. It doesn't get all cut up when you put it into poses. I kind of feel like Harley backtracks a little bit. Down at the knees, the kneecaps are stuck to the shin, so when you bend her knee, you get that kind of pointy, sticky out look right there. You can counteract it by shifting back kind of getting it closer to the upper leg. It's not as bad as characters like Batman and who else did we see it on? Maybe Iron Man? But there's also several figures in the line with knee pads on their own individual joints. Also the shoulder pads, they're stuck to the upper arm, so they do kind of get in the way, <laughs> the turtle shells, they do kind of get in the way whenever you try to come up or around. The shorts are a rubber piece, but the belt is a separate piece attached back here at this pouch. If you get too crazy with the articulation, the belt tries to ride up. So it's another one of those things that we've gotten used to in this line, getting the figure into the pose and then coming back and closing things off or putting things back into position. It doesn't get in the way, it will get away from you. And then as beautiful as the neck articulation is all the way around, notice in the back, in some poses, it just gaps all to hell. Or you notice the shape of the top of the neck, it gets off to the side and gets in the way. Line it back up, get it back behind the face. The face is removable for various reasons we'll get into, but with the neck being like it is, sometimes if you shift the wrong way, it starts pushing on the back of the face and it loosens up. Going over articulation, there are Reveltech joints at the base of the ponytails. Hinge, swivel it around. What did I just say about the face? Get back on there. Actually, it's easier to show you like this. There is a dumbbell joint that goes from the top of the neck back into the base of the skull. And because of the openness in the back, that's how you can get looking all the way up. Looks all the way down. Do I even have to bring up all the tilt? Swivels. And that's all helped by another Reveltech joint down there at the neck. It gets kind of exposed and bring the neck forward and it does hide it. You're about to get sick of hearing the word Reveltech. Reveltech joint at the shoulder, going to a ball joint down in the top of the bicep. Can bring it up. Again, shoulder pads get in the way. Swivel all the way around. That ball joint gives you movement on the end too, so you can shift up, shift down, shift forward, shift back. Then that swivels. Reveltech joint at the elbow comes most of the way up. And that swivels at the top and at the bottom. Reveltech joint at the wrist, so it goes side to side, but if you come around, rotate it, you can go up and down. Ball joint at the mid torso, hidden nicely by the top, and then ball joint at the waist. Both of those combined, oh, did it again. Give you good crunch. Arc back, plenty of tilt and swivel. Ball joint coming down to the hip. Again, rubber shorts comes all the way up. Back out, not too far. If you kind of shift around you can kind of work the joint up further. Because of ball joint, you can swivel on the hip. Swinging back around because I completely missed it, thanks to the plus for pointing it out, but there is a ball joint where the stocking meets the skin on the leg. Mine was stuck out of the package, that's why I missed it, because when I came back, it was kind of a but you actually get a fairly nice amount of movement there. Then of course it acts like a swivel. Reveltech at the knee going down to a ball joint in the lower leg. Comes back, uh, not quite, but very impressive. Because that's a ball joint down at the leg, you can shift side to side, a little bit of forward and back, and then rotate there too. Reveltech at the ankle goes back, goes forward. You can rotate side to side at the top of that joint, and then at the bottom the pin goes towards the toes, so there is rocker. Toe joint goes up to there. For accessories, Harley comes with two fists. She comes with two kind of, I don't know what to call these hands, kind of hold the weapon weight. Doink! She comes with two grip hands, then she comes with a right pointing finger and a left thumbs up. The hands here are very, very tight, but I've already taken all my pictures. I've switched these out several times. You just have to 
find the right spot and push. She comes with a baseball bat, fairly plain, not a lot to it. It's just shaped like a baseball bat. It's very tight, but it does pull apart and you'll notice some red right there. That's how tight the grip is when you're trying to press it through the hand. But once you get it through the hand, push the bat back together, looks great. She also comes with a hammer. It looks like a Donkey Kong barrel on the end of a stick. Again, lending to that kind of cartoony comic book look. Nothing to pull apart here. It just shoves right down in the hand, not a problem at all. We'll notice the hole on this side and then the bat has a hole on that side. And that's for this effect on a monopia piece. On a monopia piece. On a monopia piece. This is kind of fantastic looking. It's a piece of acrylic or plastic with some white fading out to green. And then it has another clear piece of plastic with boofsh. They spelled foosh wrong. And then all that is on a ball joint back here with a peg at a 90 degree angle. Plug that either into the hammer or the bat. And then once you're on there, you can rotate it back around wherever you need to put it. And to tell the truth, I didn't know I needed this, but once I took a couple of pictures, it was like, whoa, this is badass. Also comes with a pair of alternate feet with skates on them. These actually pull off easier than the hands do. Take the skate, press it on, and I like that. In fact, it gives her a better base to stand on. With the regular feet, they're tiny compared to the rest of the body. You put her in action poses, it kind of shifts the center of gravity. With these, it gives you kind of a wider, flatter stance. Stand her up, good to go. And then finally, there are the alternate faces. Like the back of the package says, there's normal. Looks good, has a little grin to it. It's not overly exaggerated. She has the intrigue look, which has a bigger kind of smile. You can see teeth behind it. It's kind of a more playful look. But then you have surprise, and this is almost like, oops, I just fell off the end of this building. Holy shit. And that comes apart by pulling the front of the hair off. The normal head was on it in the package, and because of that, it almost seems loose. You've seen it pop off a couple times, so when you pull the hair piece off, that face just falls the hell off. The other two heads are kind of a tight fit onto the head, and that separate hair piece does a great, great job of hiding the seam line. But my biggest gripe, and you can already see it right here, there are movable eyes on all three heads. Look at the holes right there where they're positioned. But on the front, the eyes are facing kind of close to the same direction. I don't know if they printed them just wherever the hell they wanted to, but because of that and how tight these damn things are, I almost think that the right eye is a little bit more closed than the left too on the faceplate itself. Get this eye into position, and then you start messing with this one, trying to get the same white under it or to the side or to the other side or above. And you think you got it, but it never looks like it's in the same direction. And also because of the tightness, I had these even a minute ago, but there almost seems to be a neutral position that they kind of go back to without you even messing with it. There's forces at work beyond my comprehension. I'm going to take the skates back off for the comparison, but no, it does add just a little bit of height to it. Harley is a short little figure standing at five and a half inches tall to the top of her head. Here she is with the amazing Yamaguchi Deadpool and Batman. Because of the style of the line, it's a little bit exaggerated. I don't mind her being that short. And get it out of your system. Robo didn't like the original puzzle piece cape. He's not a true fan of Revel Tech. <laughs> Here she is with the DC Collectibles icons Joker and Harley. Probably my favorite figure of this costume. Here she is with the Mattel DC Universe Classics. I don't remember which Joker this is. That's Boner Joker to me. And then Classic Joker. And then for giggles, here's the DC Direct slash Collectibles comic Joker and Arkham Joker. So at the end of the day, a very, very fun figure. Sure, it has its problems and it may just be me and my frustration level with the eyes after messing with them for hours. You may not have as much a problem with the eyes. You may be able to get them straight on every time, not mess with it much. I speak only for myself about looking down, seeing them slightly crooked, and it driving me nuts. I'm really liking the evolution of Kyoto in this line. At first, people didn't like it because it broke all to hell. You move the arm up, you can see a huge gap. You have to close it up. You have to bring it around. They've kind of tweaked articulation, tweaked joints, and now it doesn't feel so much like a bunch of separate parts barely connected together. It feels like a whole figure, which is essentially a bunch of parts just stuck together, but not so obvious when you look at it. I like the design here. I like that it's not a Harley figure that I have before. She stands out on the shelf because of how pale the skin is. The white just draws your eye and then you go, oh, it's Harley. There's the blacks, there's the reds. So even though it is kind of small, it is a striking figure against the rest of the collection. And that's what it comes down to. It's a striking figure and it's not as frustrating as this line used to be. After Venom, I was like, to hell with this line. But I kept coming back because, man, Iron Man's amazing. 
uh, uh, some other figures in the line are amazing. Yes, I still switch out the capes because I can't stand the whole segmented look, but that's just me. That's personal preference. If you dig it, that's perfectly fine. But that's with any action figure line. There's parts and pieces that I don't care for that I will change or can work around. That's just the name of the game, baby. That's just how it works. So to me, this is a fantastic addition to the Amazing Yamaguchi display because that is just meant to be crazy poses and weapons flying around and effects pieces. And you look at that and go, how the hell did those figures do that? So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe, or whatever the platform you're watching this on allows. Much, much love to the plus. If you want to see videos early or you're just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll catch you on the foosh.